Hello and welcome back to A-Level Forensic Psychology. Today we're going to be looking at Lesson 5, which is going to focus on Isink's theory of the criminal personality. Now, Hans Isink, who you can see on the screen right now, was an important figure in intelligence and personality research during the middle of the 20th century. His personality theory proposes that behavior can be represented along two dimensions. Extraversion, introversion, which we will just refer to as E, and neuroticism, stability, which we'll refer to as N. And these two dimensions combine to form a variety of personality characteristics and traits, including the criminal personality. Now, a little bit later down the line in his research, he also added a third dimension, which was psychoticism, sociability, and that is referred to as P, and that's also a big one that plays a role in offending behavior, which we'll have a look at on the next slide. Now, Isink developed the EPQ in order to measure personality types, and that is Isink's personality questionnaire. And the idea that personality can be measured is a central feature of this theory. Um, and the test allows us to establish where along the E, N, and P dimensions people are in order to work out their personality type. And you can have a go at this personality questionnaire if you want. I've linked it to the description section below, so just click on it and give it a go. Now, the measurement of personality was massively important for this theory because it actually enabled Isink to conduct research where he was able to compare personality variables to other behaviors such as criminality, which then allowed him to come up with his theory of the criminal personality. Now, according to Isink, our personality traits are biological in origin, and they come about through the type of nervous system that we inherit from our parents. So that means that our personality, according to Isink, is innate. It's biological, and we can't do anything about it. Now, there are three parts of personality that Isink say is particularly important for a criminal personality. So we'll start with extroverts. According to Isink, extroverts have an underactive nervous system. So that means that they are constantly seeking excitement, and they're constantly seeking stimulation. That results in them more likely to engage in risk-taking behaviors. And he also said that they are much harder to condition than other people. That means that they are less likely to learn from their mistakes. Whereas neurotics have high levels of reactivity in the sympathetic nervous system. Now, if you think back to your biopsychology lessons, the sympathetic nervous system is what is involved in your stress response. So having high levels of reactivity in the sympathetic nervous system effectively means that people who are neurotic respond very quickly to situations of threat, which effectively means that they have an oversensitive fight or flight response. They are overly nervous and jumpy and overanxious, and they have a general instability that makes them very unpredictable in terms of their behavior. And then finally, we have the psychotics. Psychotics are thought to have high levels of testosterone. They are thought to be unemotional and lacking in empathy. And they're also thought to be prone to aggressive behaviors. Okay, so the criminal personality is highly extroverted, highly neurotic, um, and highly psychotic as well. And then you can see on the screen there that that results in things like touchy, restless, aggressive, excitable, changeable, impulsive, active kind of behavior. Obviously, as it gets down towards the emotionally stable area, then obviously the, uh, the characteristics start to sound a little bit more positive rather than negative. Isaac's personality theory is linked to offending behavior via the process of socialization. Now, according to Isink, the socialization process, which is the process of learning the norms and values of a particular society, includes teaching children to become able to delay gratification and become more socially orientated, which effectively means you teach your kids that they can't just have what they want whenever they want it. They have to be able to wait and they have to learn to see the bigger picture. Put more simply than that, you're teaching your children to be less selfish and teaching them the difference between right and wrong. And you do that through 
reward and punishment and through modeling and that kind of stuff. Now, as we said before, people with high levels of extroversion and high levels of neuroticism are harder to condition. So that means that they are less likely to learn from previous punishments that they might have got from carrying out an antisocial behavior. So, for example, that punishment could have been something that came directly from your parents, but it could also be something like anxiety. So a lot of people, when they have an antisocial thought or an antisocial urge of some kind, they immediately feel anxious and a little bit worried about the fact that they've had that thought. And obviously that feeling of anxiety isn't great. So it is technically a punishment because we are feeling something um, that isn't very pleasant. Receiving that punishment then drives us to not want to have it again. And so we learn not to carry out the behavior. Not carrying out the behavior is then, of course, rewarded with negative reinforcement because we're not getting a punishment, but we're also taking away the anxiety. Um, but also, of course, being punished for the behavior means that it is more likely to die out. So it's just the basic principles of behaviorism. Um, however, people who have high levels of extroversion and neuroticism, because they are harder to condition, means that they're less likely to learn from the punishment that they've received for a behavior. And that means that they are more likely to behave antisocially when the opportunity to do so presents itself. So that is Isink's theory of personality linked to offending behavior. Nice and short, um, hopefully not too complicated. Right, let's move on to a couple of evaluation points. I've got one strength and two and a half limitations. So first off, one strength of the theory is that there is evidence to support the criminal personality. So Isink and Isink, that's Hans and Sybil, in 1977, they compared 2,017 male prisoner scores on the EPQ with 2,422 male controls. Across all of the age groups that were sampled, prisoners recorded higher levels of scores in terms of E, N, and P than the controls did. So this agrees with the predictions of the theory that offenders rate higher across all three dimensions identified by Isink. So nice, simple research support for you there. However, you've got a counterpoint to that, and that is that a meta-analysis of relevant studies conducted by Harrington et al. in 1982 reported that offenders tended to score higher on measures of P, but not on measures of E and N. Furthermore, research that has used EEGs has provided inconsistent evidence for the differences between extroverts and introverts. So again, that casts doubt on the physiological basis of the dimensions identified by Isaac's theory. Okay, so that means that some of the central assumptions of the theory have been challenged. Okay, so this is a nice short counterpoint to use directly after the research support. I wouldn't use the point by itself. It's not detailed enough really to make a nice evaluation point in an essay, but if you use it directly after the research support, then it almost becomes an evaluation point to your evaluation point, which adds a nice little bit of depth to your essay. So moving on to a limitation, the idea that all offending behavior can be explained by a single personality type is way too simplistic. For example, Moffat in 1993 proposed that there are several distinct types of adult male offender based on the timing of their first offense and also how long the offending persisted for. In her research, personality traits alone were a poor predictor of how long offending would continue for in that they couldn't predict whether somebody would go on to become a career criminal. Furthermore, the theory is also massively outdated. So for example, in Digman's five-factor model of personality, it suggested that alongside extroversion and neuroticism, there are also extra dimensions of openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. And from that perspective, there are a lot of possible combinations that can be made in terms of a personality type, and actually high levels of extroversion and neuroticism don't mean that offending is inevitable, okay? Because there's lots of different combinations that take those into account um, that mean that, you know, people don't go on to become offenders. So that presents a much more complex picture of offending, and it suggests that actually Isaac's theory is both out of step with modern theories, but it's also overly simplistic in what it's trying to do. 
And then as a final limitation, we have cultural factors. This suggests that cultural factors were not taken into account when Isaac did his initial research. So Bartol and Hollenchok in 1979 went into a maximum security prison in New York and studied Hispanic and African American offenders. They created six groups with their participants based on offenses and offending history, and they found that all six groups scored lower on extraversion than the non-offender controls. So that was suggested to be due to the fact that the sample was culturally different to Isaac's sample. And that then questions how far the criminal personality can be generalized and suggests that maybe it's a culturally relative concept. Right, so just to finish off then, I have a six mark outline for you for Isaac's theory. This theory, like a lot of the Year 13 topics, can be slightly tricky to put into a six-mark outline because there's lots of individual bits to the theory and knowing exactly when to use what bit and how to use them and kind of how to structure it into a six-mark outline can be a little bit confusing and can cause some problems. So I started off with a general introduction to Isaac's personality theory, ending with a, just a sentence that says that characteristics and traits are biological in origin, with a quick mention to nervous systems and the type of nervous system that we've inherited, but not too much. I've then gone on to say that the criminal personality is a mixture of high levels of E, N, and P, because that then gives us a little bit of an introduction to what those high levels actually mean. I haven't made a big deal about the fact that psychoticism was introduced. I've literally just put it in brackets and said psychoticism, a dimension that was added later. You don't really need to say anything more than that because at the end of this third paragraph, I've said psychotics are thought to have high levels of testosterone, be unemotional and prone to aggression. And that kind of tells you everything that you need to know. Also, bear in mind, you don't need to say everything about people who are extroverted and people who are neurotic. You just need to kind of pick out the few bits that are important, the ones that kind of highlight the important bits for the theory. I've then finished off with a link to socialization, but I have kind of reworded it a little bit because I needed it to be concise, but still make sense. Okay, so I've just kind of kept it fairly short whilst still kind of covering the main bits and hopefully making it clear um, why it's important that the two are linked. And that brings us to the end of the video. Now remember, this is a paper three topic, which means that you can get a whole range of questions um, on this. Um, it hasn't come up yet massively in the new spec, it came up in the old spec as an essay, but in the last couple of years, this hasn't really made much of an appearance. Um, so just be aware, you know, you can get short answer questions on this, you know, two, three markers that just says outline the theory. But obviously the forensic psychology topic lends itself quite nicely to application questions as well. You could, of course, just get your standard outline and evaluate essay because, again, paper three means that, um, you know, essays are fairly common. So just be aware um, that it could come up in a range of different ways okay so i hope it's been useful and i hope it's all made sense if you've got any questions please put them in the comment section below and i will get back to you asap thank you very much for listening and i'll see you in the next one